everyone, it's a Terran here. I'm not dead. Uh, evidence to the contrary. Notwithstanding, I actually am still alive, and I'm going to be recording some Hearthstone for you today. So, I just haven't been recording videos because I haven't been playing League of Legends recently, but I figured I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone, and I think there's some fun things that we can do if I do some Hearthstone videos. So I'm going to do that uh, for now, and then we'll jump into some other strategy games as well later. I really want to get back into recording because I had a lot of fun with it, and I think you guys enjoyed my videos, so hopefully we can get some stuff going. Um, I'll probably just be doing variety strategy games, uh, that kind of thing, maybe a little bit of League of Legends here and there, um, but I probably will not be focusing on League of Legends as heavily as my channel was uh, a year ago, which, or a year and a half ago, the last time I recorded a video. My idea for this Hearthstone series, uh, with that out of the way, is I'm going to be taking this new, brand new account, uh, I've only done the AI battles on it, from zero to legendary, uh, completely free. And I'll sort of be going over the way we collect, uh, build the collection, build good decks, uh, how to maximize your gold game so that you can build your collection as fast as possible and go legendary. A bunch of other people have done legendary runs. Um, previously to this, but I, those were generally done when Hearthstone was a much younger game, and so I think it was easier to do free-to-play to legendary runs uh, in the past. Um, this is really going to be sort of a new player guide and how to just build your collection as quickly as possible. Um, we'll also be talking strategy tips that will be useful for advanced players as well, but if you're new to Hearthstone, this is a great way to start. Um, as I said, I've done all of the AI battles in this, uh, the sort of like starting quests and the beat all the basic and expert level decks to unlock all the classes, but I have not yet leveled up all the classes um, fully, so that will be one of our first priorities will be to level up all the classes. Uh, with that being said, let's start right away because the most exciting thing we get to do is open these three packs. We got one for beating all the basic classes, one for beating all the expert classes, and one for playing a game on a mobile device. So these are our sort of three free packs. We'll also get an additional free pack from the starting quest you get, which is complete a game in play mode. And we'll also be able to start building up our deck with the free uh, stuff from the arena and with the gold. I'm going to save this gold because we might need to do an emergency arena run. I won't be doing too many arena runs because going infinite in arena isn't as interesting as sort of building up the collection rather than just grinding out arena games. Um, so I'll probably be spending most of my gold on packs or on unlocking solo adventures. One of the early things we're going to want to do is unlock uh, the first wing of each of Nax, Ramis, and Blackrock Mountain because they give very good rewards. Um, as you can see from Nax, Ramis, the Reward here includes Haunted Creeper and Nerubian Egg, which are incredibly important for most aggro decks, uh, which is what you will generally be able to build early on. And the first wing of Black Rock Mountain uh, includes uh, Emperor Tharasan and Grim Patron. And Grim Patron, once we unlock wing four of Nax Ramus, uh, is one of the cheaper decks to build uh, the, the Grim Patron Warrior deck. But that's something we'll talk about much later. I probably won't be recording videos every day, and I won't be grinding out 100 games a day because that's not how normal people play Hearthstone, and I don't have time for that. Uh, this will really be focused on how to optimize gaining your collection and good, getting to Legendary with like a reasonable amount of play rather than playing 200 games. So, with the, that part out of the way, let's do the really exciting part and open the free packs that we got. Pack number one. Come on, early legendary. That would make this all much easier. Oh, we got an epic. It's a big game hunter. That's huge. That goes in a lot of decks. Uh, South Sea Deckhand has some use. Shield Bearer will be turning into dust. Um, Perdition's Blade will be turning into dust, but we might use it early. And a Sorcerer's Apprentice, very useful for early mage decks. So, some good stuff from our first pack. Second pack, Abusive Sergeant, another great card that we'll be using in a lot of decks. Our rare is a Violet Teacher, goes in some decks, uh, Rogue and Mage, some early Mage decks without access to a full collection, we'll use this Violet Teacher. Throwing a Thorn Tiger probably will be turning it to Dust, Conceal, uh, almost definitely Dust, and 
inner fire dust. So not as good from the second pack, but well on the way. One of the goals here is to craft as few cards as possible, because if you craft a card and then open it, you lose dust value. Slam, great for warriors, definitely goes in any warrior deck that we build. A counterspell, um, probably just going to craft that. I don't think we're going to be building a deck that uses counterspell very early. Uh, although Tempo Mage isn't super expensive to build, so maybe. You need the Flame Wakers, but anyways. Um, a Snipe will probably dust, a Light Spawn probably dust, and an Unleash the Hound is very good for Hunters. Definitely goes in all of our Hunter decks. So, the next thing that we're going to do is do our daily quest to get another pack, but first I'm going to build a... I'm going to finish building a Hunter deck. Oh, these are the two decks that I used to, to beat the AI. Um, we want to get all of our classes to level 10 as soon as possible, and also get one class to level 20 to unlock the Tavern Brawl, because that will make doing the class quests way easier. Um, and you get a free pack every week from the Tavern Brawl, so that's a huge source of pack income. So we might actually just play Warlock, because it's my highest level uh, card right away. As you can see, we have Casual and Ranked. We will just be jumping straight into Ranked. Um, playing Casual games doesn't make much sense. Uh, but first, let's upgrade our Hunter deck with our new cards. Picked up a Snipe, not so useful, but we got an Unleash the Hounds, which can go in over... Um, hmm. I think probably this No Mission Venter is the weakest card in this Hunter deck. These fulfill very similar functions, they're both late game plays. Don't want any of these. Uh, our Shield Bearer we will ignore for now. South Sea Deckhand, we don't own any Hunter weapons, but the Abusive Sergeant is definitely going in uh, over the second Gnomish Inventor. Big Game Hunter. We actually could play this card. It's one of our more powerful cards. It doesn't really fit the synergy of the deck, and we won't be facing that many guys with 7 attack early, because other people will also be collection limited. So I think we'll pass on the Big Game Hunter for now. Um, and the Violet Teacher we don't want, and the Stranglethorn Tiger actually does fit in this deck, because we have the Hound Masters and the Timberwolves. Um, so I'm going to cut one... Um, let's cut a Boulder Fist Ogre for this Stranglethorn Tiger. And we will jump into a game with this Hunter deck and try to level up the Hunter as fast as possible. Alright, definitely picking ranks from the start. Let's do our first game. Ideally, we, we win this game, um, but it doesn't matter that much. So, it's now August 1st, the beginning of the ranked season. Uh, the beginning of ranked seasons is much harder because everyone who got bumped down from higher levels is playing these low-level ranked games now because they all got reset. Uh, so we definitely have a harder road ahead of us. Do we want to keep the arcane shot? Probably not. I think we'll just ditch this Stranglethorn Tiger. You always want to ditch uh, cards that cost more than two or three mana. Um, and I think we will get rid of the arcane shot because we have, uh, we'd rather just be playing guys early. Alright, this is an okay hand. It's not great. We definitely would rather have a one drop. Okay, we, we redrew our arcane shot. I'm gonna say hello to this person because gotta say hello. They're not doing anything. Uh, because we drew this grizzly bear, I'm gonna play the 3 2 over the 2 3. Um, sometimes you wanna play the 2 3, but because we have a taunt to protect this, if our opponent plays a 2 3 or his own 3 2, uh, we just want to do as much damage as quickly as possible to this opponent. Okay, opponent with a slow start, just fire blasting our guy. We could play Abusive Sergeant River Croc and get in for five. I actually like that because the opponent has uh, two one health targets to fire blast if we do that. And getting in that five damage early sets us off to a good start. Opponent still has the coin. Um, probably just going to fire blast the three one here. Yep. And then maybe coin out a two mana play. 
could be a frost bolt on our river crocolisk. It could be just a guy. If it's just a guy, we hope it's a 3-2 that we can arcane shot. Perfect. Life juggler is exactly what we wanted to see there. So we're just going to maximize our mana by playing the arcane shot and this grizzly. Hit our opponent for four. This is a very aggressive deck, the hunter deck, and we're just trying to do as much damage as possible while keeping our opponent from having anything on the board um, so that when we get to the late game, our steady shot can just finish him off. Opponent getting good value off of his fire blast, but I think this is probably too slow. I'm going to start with a tracking here. Um, oh, that's great. We definitely want one of these Hound Masters over the Boulder Fist Ogres. So we will take this. We're going to play the Hound Master and just deal, uh, just taunt up the Iron Fur Grizzly and hit our opponent in the face. He might have a Fireball to kill this, in which case we would rather have buffed this guy. But I think having the bigger minion um, here so that he can't uh, fire blast and then trade the Geomancer into our Grizzly is going to be better. Opponent has a lot of spell damage on the table, but we can... Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay, I was not expecting that arcane explosion. Um, we're going to play the 3-2 and the 2-3 rather than the Animal Companion here, just because it maximizes our mana, even though the Animal Companion would be a better play. But we really want to start Arcane Shotting every turn, and we want to use our mana as efficiently as possible in the late game here. We're in good shape. We Our opponent's going to have a hard time killing us, probably, and they aren't playing much, uh, killing us before we can Arcane Shot them to death. And it's actually hard to find life gain spells uh, with early decks, because there aren't that many cards with life gain. Okay, that blizzard is very good. Um, but we still have 29 life to play with. I'm going to play this Animal Companion. If we get Huffer, I will play Shattered Sun Cleric rather than Arcane Shot. Because um, it gives us a chance to use this Shattered Sun Cleric's buff, which we probably would not have gotten otherwise. See if our opponent has more AoE. That Huffer is a perfect draw here. They do have more AoE. So four turns of steady shotting is going to finish the opponent off. Um, if we get another Huffer, that would be insane. Uh, we did perfect luck on these Animal Companions. You have a 1 in 3 chance of getting this guy. It's the one you almost always want when you're playing Hunter because it's 4 damage to the face immediately. Had we gotten one of the ones that doesn't have charge... Uh, then his area of effect stuff would have just cleared it. Oh, okay. That could be an ice block. That could save him. This could save him for a turn. So I'm just going to use the city shot, see if he dies. Okay, so it was not an ice block. It didn't save him, and he died. All right, well, that's our first win ever on this account. Um... So we're one out of three towards ten more gold, and we leveled up our hunter a couple times. Picking up some hunter's marks, which could easily go right into the hunter deck. And we got a pack. Play three games in play mode, we get a hundred gold. So first things first, let's open this pack, see if we get any upgraded spells. Redemption, uh, that could go if we build an aggro paladin deck. Um, we could use that redemption, maybe. Second redemption, okay. A wrath, great spell to open up, because that goes in any druid deck. A knife juggler is a wonderful spell. We definitely want two of these at some point. Uh, and so opening one and not having to craft it is a, is a huge game for us. And that deadly shot could go into our hunter deck very easily. So the question is, do we go right back into play mode, or do we do our arena? We also get a 
free arena run at the beginning of the game, and I think we're going to do we're going to do the play mode because I believe when we finish this quest, we get a a normal quest, one of the daily quests, which could be a play a certain class quest. And if the play a certain class quest lines up with our arena quest or arena classes, um, then we get free value off of that by doing the quest without having to build a specific deck for it. Um, lining up our arena play and our tavern brawl play to our quests is going to be a key p part of making sure that we have the right amount of uh, income to complete our collection. So let's do the next three games. Just gonna probably... So first off, we want to upgrade that Hunter deck, and probably just grind out Hunter to unlock the next set of cards, getting Hunter to level 10 and unlocking all the basic cards. Um, let's get rid of this second Boulder Fist Ogre. And do we want the Deadly Shot? I don't think so. I think we just want this Knife Juggler. Which definitely skews our deck more aggressive. Another... Two more cards to consider here are Elven Archer and Stone Tusk Boar. Stone Tusk Boar mainly because it's a beast, um, and Elven Archer because it does one damage in combination with the Knife Juggler that we just opened. I think we're okay for now, though, and should just stick with this deck the way it is. So, small upgrade there, which is great. Let's jump into play mode. Keep on keeping on. Note for this quest, we only have to play three games. We don't even have to win three games, so that's actually uh, phenomenal for us. I'm going to make each episode of this probably between half an hour and an hour. Um, just trying not to go way too long. Uh, but give you guys a reasonable amount to watch. So Timberwolf on turn one is fine. We'll keep that. We'll keep the Animal Companion because it's the best spell in our deck. We could keep Arcane Shot to protect the Timberwolf, but we really want a two-mana spell, so I'm just going to look for... Okay, we got the other Arcane Shot. You can't redraw the card that you mulligan, but if you have two of that card in a deck, um, you can draw the second one. There's some consideration to waiting until we have beasts to buff with this guy before we play it, but I think just getting in the damage is going to be nice here. Hopefully this is a 3-2 that we can just Arcane Shot out of the way. Oh, okay. That's a great card against us right now. Um, I think we're going to ignore it with the Arcane Shot. We will run, not run the Timberwolf into it. Uh, we're just going to Steady Shot. Noyatron has Taunt and Divine Shield. I should actually mouse over these cards more so that people who are new to the game can see what we're working with. <laughs> That's a neat combo. It's going to make this guy bigger and bigger. So, I have a choice here. If we had drawn a 2-drop, I probably would have killed the Anoyatron with Arcane Shot and played um, the 2 two mana spell, but with Animal Companion, okay, unfortunately we got Huffer, which actually, in this spot, we didn't want Huffer, either the other two beat this Anoyatron, uh, but because this is a one in three chance that we failed, we ended up with a Huffer. Um, I, am, I am going to run the Huffer into the Anoyatron here, uh, just to keep my opponent from playing something that makes it bigger. Um, I can't think what that would be, but if he had, that would be really good there. But better to play it safe there, I think. Uh, Chirwin Yeti is a good drop on this board. Um, my opponent needs another Shattered Sun Cleric, basically, to trade his Shattered Sun for my Chirwin Yeti. Uh, and if he doesn't get that, then this Chirwin Yeti trades two for one here. Which, given that his Anoyatron already traded two for one, we're down a card. And need to start catching back up. As well as actually doing some damage to the opponent. Because the chances are good that he has bigger stuff in his deck than we have in our deck. Okay, Flesh-Eating Ghoul is going to be a 4-3, but we're okay with that. 
Ooh, face. That's actually great for us, because we get to Arcane Shot his Shattered Sun Cleric. So we're going to kill the Flesh Eating Ghoul with our Yeti first. Going to Arcane Shot the Shattered Sun Cleric, so that our Yeti takes one less damage. Um, and then we're going to play our Shattered Sun Cleric on this Yeti to buff it, make it so that it beats the Swordsmith in combat. But I should have done this tracking before the Arcane Shot. I don't think it's going to change our play. Um... Here, I think we just want the raptor, just a guy. And then Chatterton Cleric makes this Yeti too big for the Master Swordsmith to kill. Azure Drake is a nice one. Um, this is one of the cards that just goes in every deck early, because it has so much, uh, it's just such a high power level card. Luckily, we drew this Unleash the Hounds, which combined with our Timber Wolf is going to let us clear the Azure Drake, um, and we will just do that now, because it, it puts us ahead on board by a lot. We'll eat his Swordsmith. We'll deal two damage to him, and I'll play this River Crocolisk. Um, rather than using Arcane Shot, or Steady Shot, uh, I want to play a guy, and I want to play the Croc over the Bloodfen Raptor, because if our opponent has Consecration that deals two damage to all my stuff, the Croc survives it. Um, and this is such a good board to conse Consecration, making it even better. Um, definitely is not where we want to be. Luckily, looks like our opponent does not have that, so we're going to be able to trade our, our Croc plus our Chilwin Yeti in for his Gurubashi Berserker. We could also just go to the face, which might be better. It looked, he would certainly have played Consecration last turn if he had it. So we can do uh, 8, 11, 12, 15, 17 damage to our opponent and put him to 8. I think we just do that and play all our stuff. So he basically needs to have this card that he just drew be a Consecration to clear our board, or he loses. Um, that's, I think, pretty much the only card that gets him out of this situation. <laughs> and of course it was. <laughs> Okay. Well, well played, opponent. And he had uh, a life gain spell as well. So that's game. Um, there's not much you can do about that when they pull the exact card they need off the top of their deck. Um, I think we will hold this Shattered Sun Cleric in case we draw a second Wolf Rider or an Animal Companion that can turn into a Huffer. We could still win this game, but it seems very unlikely. Yeah, so we need to kill them this turn, and there's nothing in our deck that does that. So, alright, good game. Um, good beats. Sometimes your opponent pulls exactly the card they need off the top of their deck. We weren't beating a Consecration no matter what happened there, so... Jump right back in. I'll probably do a segment later on on deck building and, and the choices that I'm making, but for now we're basically just jamming the best cards that we own into into a deck. Um, this is good, being on the draw uh, is better for mo most of these decks, because you get to start with your knife juggler and whatever. Um, I will keep this Bloodfen Raptor, I think, because we might want to play a 3-2 or a 2-3 on turn 2. Um, so I think we just keep every card in his hand. Ideally, we get to go Coin Knife Juggler, River Crocolisk, Shattered Sun Cleric, 
or Point Knife Good Lord, Bloodbin Raptor, Shattered Sun Cleric. Um, and hope our opponent can't kill the next juggler on turn two. This is such a good card. It's more powerful than every other card that we own right now. He could fire blast this. Um, if he has a frost bolt, he'll certainly frost bolt it. Fire blast me. Okay, well, if you're going to use that fire blast, you definitely fire blast the knife juggler there. Um, here I'm going to play the river crocolis over the Bloodfen Raptor, because we can use Shattered Sun Cleric to make this into a 3-4, which will be if he plays like a 3-3 three, three on this turn. 3 mana for a 3-3 three, three is about standard. Um, so basically this gives us a choice of making a 4-3 or a 3-4 with the Shattered Sun Cleric, and having the choice is better. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened. It's too bad that that knife went there. We'd have rather it went at the opponent's face, because we wasted one damage. But if he has to spend his turn four fire blasting our 3-1, we're okay with that. Explosive Sheep, Fire Blast, Explosive Sheep is very nice. Wow, okay. So you definitely just want to kill your own Explosive Sheep there. Um, because it just clears the board. And you don't take the 6 damage that the opponent is about to take. I will play this Yeti. It's going to take damage. Um, when he, his Explosive Sheep blows up. But that's okay, it'll survive. So you don't play that before the sheep dies. Our opponent playing very poorly with his sheep right now. Because now his sheep kills his own Frostwolf grunt for no reason. Just gonna keep playing out our guys. hit them for as much damage as possible. Wolf Rider is one of the best spells in this deck, because it does 3 damage immediately, and then they have to deal with it. Um, we now also have a Beast for our Houndmaster. Shield Bearer would have been annoying if the opponent had drawn it earlier, and same with um, Water Elemental. But because he didn't, we just win. Because we do 4 damage to that with this. 5... 8, and 10. So a couple mistakes by our opponent, but you kind of expect that um, playing in the early game here. Early levels here. We need to level up the Hunter once more, and we unlock a couple cards. So keep jumping right back in. Definitely want to get a, a class to level 20. I think I'll play this last game and then open the pack and then maybe do the arena draft uh, and then call the episode. All right, here we are against another hunter, so let's see who can out hunter the other. We wouldn't mind a one mana spell, but this two, three, four curve is great, so we're just going to keep it. Our one mana creatures are not very good. We basically only have. Abusive Sergeant as a good turn one play. Timberwolf is okay, and we'll do that when we need to, but... Um, it doesn't do that much early on. Our opponent running the Stone Tusk Boars that we decided not to run, like I talked about earlier. I think this card just doesn't do enough to justify a card, even when you have Houndmasters in your deck. Because as you can see here... Our two mana play just blanks his Stone Tusk Boar. It's just going to turn it into food. Coin and an Iron Fur Grizzly. So we were going to play uh, Animal Companion this turn, but because he played the Iron Fur Grizzly, we're going to play Shattered Sun Cleric and win this fight. So now he can send his uh, 
his stone does bore into the river croc, but if he does that, we'll at least have gotten two spells for... We'll have gotten two cards for our croc. And his coin. Here we get to hit this, and then play this shield master. So again, we get to eat his spell for free. Um, in these hunter versus hunter games where you're both playing aggressive decks, you often end up wanting to just run the opponent out of cards rather than do damage as fast as possible. And against this guy who's playing a lot of cards that don't uh, do very much, that's certainly our plan. Opponent electing not to attack with his Patriarch. He could have hit me with it. Uh, he has a lot of one health guys, so I am going to play Knife Juggler. And I think Animal Companion will be the creature that we'll play here. Misha was the, the perfect guy to draw there, um, and I will hit this Timberwolf over this Owl. Then you can see why Knife Juggler is such a good card right there. Um, even with only one knife, it basically cleared our opponent's board, got a completely free card out of him. Uh, each of our cards has traded for at least one of our opponent's cards, and most of them have traded for two. Shattered Sun Cleric traded for two, River Crocolis traded for two, because he's playing all these Stone Dust Boars and thing, and Timberwolves that just die. There he's able to use Houndmaster to, uh, no, you have to hit the one with Taunt, uh, to, oh, to choose not to clear our Misha. That's definitely a mistake. Um, if the knife lands on this, our opponent choosing not to attack my stuff a lot, which is a little bit weird. If the knife lands on the Owl, after I play this Grizzly, uh, then I can finish it off with Arcane Shot, so... I'm going to play this, this Grizzly. Knife went to the opponent's face, which is too bad, because we kind of wanted it to uh, to hit one of his guys. They're both four attack. I think we will just hit with the three, four. Um, and then hit our opponent's face. Let him trade his four, three for a four, four. Uh, and then I will just play my second iron for a grizzly. We played the second iron for a grizzly later because we wanted the knife, we were going to be out of mana, so we wanted the knife <laughs> with this end turn button um, to have a higher chance of hitting the opponent in the face. Goldshire Footman, another card that doesn't do anything against our stuff. He can now spend, send his 4-3 at our 4-4, which he, he does. Opponent learning a little bit. Um... We're just going to take the opportunity to hold on to this arcane shot because we don't need to use it when we have these three health guys that can kill us two health guys. But I'm going to start with tracking. Uh, definitely want the Houndmaster here. It's by far the best card on this board, or card for this board. We'll hit both of his guys to maximize the number of knives that we get. Um, hit the opponent in the face. And then I will play this River Crocolisk and uh, give one of my Grizzlies. No, I'll give this Croc the plus two, plus two. Leaving these guys at one health is bad against Unleash the Hounds, but having as big a guy as possible here is really nice when our opponent does something like a Savannah High Main. I'm going to start with Animal Companion, because if we get Leoc, that helps our trades um, significantly. Do I want to shoot this with Arcane Shot? I think so. As weird as it is to not take just the free card here, the knife helps. The, the knife hitting the uh, Savannah High Main helps us a lot. Or we can just get um, Leoc, and then our Houndmaster can kill it. Uh, we also had lethal. <laughs> I should have been paying better attention. We just, like, kill our opponent there. That will often happen to me, um, where I stop paying attention. I'm so focused on clearing the board that I stop paying attention to whether I can kill my opponent. 
All right, so we got our win. Oh, we're like two XP short of leveling up the hunter. Yeah, yeah, we get a World of Warcraft mount. I don't play World of Warcraft, but we got 110 gold because we won three games in play mode, and we got the 100 gold for that quest. Now we get another quest. Deal 100 damage to enemy heroes. So that basically you get in four games, but this is one of the daily quests, I think. So we are now at the point where uh, we're getting daily quests. So let's do our arena run. Um, arena, you basically pick a deck from sets of random cards. Can I... Yeah, actually, I don't like this quest. Let's get a, a different quest. Ideally one that gives more than 40 gold. We don't care um, what the quest is, but if we refresh it... Okay, destroy 40 minions is about as hard to do as uh, deal 100 damage to enemy heroes. It'll take a little bit longer, actually, but either way, we're fine. Um, so these arena games... Yeah, yeah. Usually requires an entry fee. It's on the house. Haha. <laughs> we don't have any um, quests that require us to do specific use a specific class. We don't have any. Um, our heroes are of the level where, like, we don't have the warlock or the hunter. We would choose those to get one of those to level twenty as fast as possible. Uh, so I'm just going to choose the class that I think tends to do the best in Arena, which is Mage. Mage is usually considered, Mage and Paladin are usually considered the strongest Arena classes. So let's do this draft, and then I believe that will be it. Uh, in Arena, it's slower than Constructed, so you want to pick cards that get you other cards. You generally want to avoid guys with one health, because everyone's playing Mage, so they can just kill your one health guys. Stampede and Kodo is a great start to an arena deck. This guy is just a great card. Um, I will take Polymorph over Hungry Dragon. Hungry, Hungry Dragon is a good card, especially in Mage, because you can often just shoot the, the one health, one cost guy that it summons. But Polymorph is a great removal spell that I really want. Uh, these two cards are pretty bad, so we'll take Mech Warper. This can help if we get some mechs, and also just is a 2 mana 2-3, which is not bad. Chilwin Yeti is one of the best cards in Arena. So we'll take him, because he's just very efficient in terms of stats. I don't like Wind Fury Harpy that much. I don't like Mirror Entity that much either, but I think I'll take it over the Wind Fury Harpy. Sometimes this can get your opponent really well. Shattered Sun Cleric, we saw the power of in the Hunter deck. Um, just helps you trade really well, so we'll grab one of those. Flame Cannon is just a nice removal spell, and I'm happy to take it. Dragonkin Sorcerer, we don't have any dragons, um, so but I think it's still better than Flesh Eating Ghoul. The basic question is do we want a 4 mana 3 5 or a 4 mana 4 4? Uh, I think we'll take the Sorcerer. We, or, yeah, we don't have anything that can target it, um, and probably won't because we're a mage, so mages don't target their own minions usually. Um, is the spell damage going to be helpful? Probably not. I think we'll take the 3 5. This can trade against your opponent's early plays. Abusive Sergeant isn't bad. Wind Fury Harpy is, is okay, but we'll just take the late game of Force Tank Max. This gives us a nice super late game play. This is a tough pick, actually. I like Blizzard, I like Injured Blademaster, and I really like Knife Juggler. Actually, this isn't that tough a pick. We need two mana minions, so we'll take the Knife Juggler. Um, Spectral Knight is a great card, as is Arcane Intellect. We have... Uh, only one 5-drop so far. I think I'll take the Spectral Knight over Arcane Intellect. That could be wrong. Zombie Child is one of the best cards you can get in Arena. It gives you such powerful early board control if you can play it on turn 1. Here we'll take the Arch Archmage over Reckless Rocketeer. Not my favorite spell, but whatever. Uh, Cult Master is a great one. You can often go off with this and draw a million cards. Our deck is getting a little bit heavy on 4-drops. Um... We don't have enough spells to want this mana worm yet. Uh, Flame Cannon and Mirror Entity and Polymorph. So if we like go mana worm into Flame Cannon, that's great, because then we built our own zombie chow. But if we don't, then uh, it's just a 1-3, and that's not very good. So we'll take this Cult Master, because you can go off with it. Here I might take mana worm, because it's Dragon's Breath is trash, and Iron Forge Rifleman isn't great either. So I think we're going to do that, and then we can prioritize early spells a bit more. I like Spiteful Smith, I like Spellbreaker, um, 
I think we'll take Spellbreaker here because we don't have, we're not a weapon class, even though we're a little heavy on four drops. Uh, definitely a second Shattered Sun over a second Mirror Entity. Here, I think I take Spiteful Smith over second Mana Worm. If I take second Mana Worm, I can maybe pick up a Frostbolt or two and just have a really aggressive deck. And they go well with our Cult Master. If we can ever buff these Mana Worms, they're great. So I think I'm going to do that and hope that we get some stuff that we can buff with. Children Yeti, always an easy pick. Um, Injured Blade Master, we definitely want over these cards that care about secrets. We only have one secret and are unlikely to pick more, or are going to try to avoid picking more. Uh, Frost Nova is too slow, or too too much card disadvantage. Um, South Sea Deckhand is not good, so we'll take Dragon's Breath, even though we're not thrilled about it. I'll take Lost Tall Strider here, I think. We have so many 4-mana spells. We really don't need a Lord of the Arena, and Dragon's Breath is just not great. So, alright. Uh, we have no Murlocs. Do we have any Pirates? We have no Murlocs and no Pirates. Are we more likely to get a Pirate or a Murloc? Probably a Pirate, so I'll take South Sea Captain. <laughs> that's too bad that that's our epic. Um... I will take River Crocolisk over Micro Machine. I think Micro Machine is overrated in Arena because it's so often just a 2 2, and I don't hate a 2 mana 2 3. Uh, Mad Bomber is a great one. Um, I don't hate having an antique heal bot in a deck, but I think we want to be more aggressive. Mad Bomber can sometimes just get your opponent really good. Uh, we'll take this Polymorph over the Silver Hand Knight because we want more spells for our mana worms. Um, but we will take this third Shattered Sun Cleric because they go super well with our mana worms. Uh, over Arcane Intellect and, and the third Polymorph. Ship's Cannon cares about our Pirate. Um, and we do need more two two drops, so I'll take the Ship's Cannon. <laughs> we could take another South Sea Captain. Or a Pyroblast. Pyroblast is hugely overrated in Arena. People like to take this. Our deck is very aggressive. Um, let's look at our curve. So we have one, two, three, four, five two mana cards. One, two, three, four, five three mana cards. I'm not counting. I guess you could count me around any six three mana cards. Um, I'm not counting Flame Cannon because you don't always play that on turn two. Um, this is a tough one. Pyroblast will help us end games, but South Sea Captain actually works really well with our second South Sea Captain and our ship's cannon. I think I'll take the Pyroblast. This could be wrong, but being able to just win a game from nowhere is pretty nice. And here we'll take the Sunwalker, because it's just a great card, and so that's our arena. Um, well, the Innkeeper told me to, and I wasn't going to play the first game of this arena, but this is an interesting deck, and the Innkeeper told me to, so let's play the first game of this arena, and now I'll cut the episode. I don't think that this is a very strong deck, but if we curve out with some Mana Worms into Flame Cannons, into Shattered Sun Clerics, then we will crush our opponent. Um, and if we don't, then we will probably have some tr trouble. Generally with Arena, uh, it costs 150 gold to enter the Arena, which means you want to... Uh, and you get at least 150 gold back if you get 7 or more wins. So you go even if you have 7 wins. If we had a 2 drop, I would keep both this 3 and this 4, but we don't. So we're just going to look for 1s and 2s. Um, this deck is full of 1s and 2s and is going to have a hard time winning without them. Turn 1 Zombie Chow is the ideal play for this deck. So we will do that. If we draw one of our three Shattered Sun Clerics um, in the next couple turns, then we are off to a great start. Okay, opponent playing a Secret. That's probably Avenge. If you play this, uh, the 2-1 that that gets hit by Zombie Chow, that's pretty bad. Yeah, so 
my guess is that that's Avenge, which gives uh, one of his guys plus three plus two uh, if another guy dies. We will just fire blast this guy if we don't draw anything to play, which we didn't, unfortunately. I would much rather have drawn something to play here. If we had drawn a, a spell there, a Shattered Sun Cleric or something similar, um, the game would probably be over. As it is, we're still in great shape. We're just way ahead on board, and we've got some plays for the next few turns. If you go one, two, three, four uh, spells, it's very hard to lose an arena game. One, two, four is significantly less good, because now this four mana spell is going to blink what we do, probably. Oh man, okay. So I am going to just play this Chilwind Yeti and not attack, I think. Ooh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not attacking here because it makes my opponent's Consecration work. Um, he can't make this a... Uh, he can't put Blessing of Kings on this because it can't be targeted by spells. He can buff it with a Shattered Sun Cleric. I think that's a Blessing of Kings that he just realized he can't use. So the unfortunate thing is Stampeding Kodo could eat his 1-1 one -one here, which would really suck for us, but I think we still have to go for it. This is an important 50-50. Um, this will make it a 4, a 5. So if, if the Kodo eats the 1-1, one -one, the Avenge goes off, that makes it a 5-7. Yes. That's so bad for us. I could silence it and hit the 1-1. One -one. I could just hit it and then give my opponent a 4-3 and then fire blast the 4-3. Or silence the 4 Actually, I like just silencing the Avenge off here. Okay, well, we're just going to hit this. Um, I really wanted this Stampede Encoder to go off, but I think the likelihood of it hitting the 4-3 the is just too high. So I'm just going to silence the Avenge off with my Spellbreaker and then hit it with my chap. This puts us really far ahead on board. We got a free card, or two free cards, um, that we got his Avenge and his Arcade Nullifier for free. I was really hoping he would play a four mana spell last turn. Okay, Blessing of Might on your um, three one there is not really where you want to be against a mage. Um, do I play another card? Yes. This is resistant to uh, Consecration, so he would need both Equality and Consecration in order to clear my board. Equality giving everything one health, and Consecration dealing two damage to all of it. Molten Giant is pretty cute, um, but we have one of our Polymorphs here. which will enable us to just win this turn. Okay, so that was the deck working basically exactly as planned. Um, our opponent didn't do much on the first couple turns, which definitely helped, but it looks like this arena is pretty good. And we leveled up our mage, picking up some mirror images. And made a little bit of progress on our... Oh, I should have killed his his 1-1 one -one to make progress on that quest. Because um, the faster you do that, the better. I'm going to hang on to this gold because our, our plan is to use the early gold to make sure we always have an arena run and unlock the uh, solo adventures as quickly as possible. Because getting access to those cards is harder than getting access to cards from packs. And we also want to level up our Warlock or our Hunter, who are currently leveled as quickly as possible to get access to the Tavern Brawl, because that gives us more packs. Uh, so that's our plan for the next episode, but for now, I'm going to call this one here. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you find this series fun and interesting. And please feel free, of course, to comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel. Um, it feels good to be back recording stuff. I really enjoy doing that. And I hope you guys enjoy it, too. Anyways, friends, cheers.
and I will catch you all later.